today's collectible spot, we are having a look at the Sideshow Collectibles Deadpool 6 scale figure. Spot picked this up from the folks over at Alter Ego Comics. I'll put the link down below if you guys are interested in picking this guy up for yourself. Speaking of picking up, this was a figure. As soon as I saw him, well, as soon as we heard news that we were going to get a Deadpool and then we saw some images of the toy fair where he was featured, I really was excited getting this guy in hand. It's not to say necessarily that... Well, Hot Toys may ultimately release still a Deadpool for the upcoming Ryan Reynolds release of Deadpool. It's still not sure. We may still potentially get that, that we will have theoretically a comic version of Deadpool and a movie version of Deadpool. And that's perfectly fine with me. For the package, we've got a picture of Deadpool on the front. And it's kind of got that comic... A uh, speckled, spotted look to it. And I think it really stands out well in red, especially when you couple that with the white font of Deadpool down below. Moving the box only slightly on an angle, you can see how that arm carries over from the front of the box over to the side with a thumb to this guy. Well, not this guy here, but this guy right here. For the back of the box, it's pretty much the same fare as the front, although now we're treated this to more of a sketched black and white interpretation of the front box image. And a little bit extra for the fans out there, you've got the Deadpool logo featured up on the top. When you remove the front box panel, inside you're treated to a secondary panel with a bullseye and Deadpool logo in the middle. It's a really neat effect before you get to, of course, the main man. You open that up, and inside is Deadpool himself. A couple of little bit of foam inserts. We'll remove that in a second, and we will get the figure from there opened up. But in the meantime, Spot's going to take a break. I'm going to get this guy completely out of the box, and when we come back, we're getting a better look at the Sideshow Collectibles Deadpool 6 scale figure. There's more handy way, guys. Don't go anywhere. Stay tuned. Just before we have a look at the Sideshow Collectibles six scale figure of Deadpool, of course, the first thing we're going to have to look at is the display stand. And while it doesn't necessarily feature, well, it doesn't feature Deadpool's name anywhere on a front placard, what you end up getting is this floor grate design that has the Deadpool logo on it. I do really like that. It's not overly busy. It looks like something practical that the figure would be standing on. And then down below, we've got Marvel, uh, Marvel.com. There is a circular peg hole, it's right there. What you can do is reach over here. Comes also included with a standard, well, I guess standard for the nature of this sort of display stand. Comes with a standard uh, clip on the back for the figure to sit, stand over top of. Doesn't end there, however, because the folks over at Sideshow also include these extra rods. And what would these rods be for, you ask yourself? talking aloud with somebody walking into the room. What are you, who are you talking to? I'm oh, talking to the guy on the YouTube channel. These little rods, these little holes, if you can see them right there, uh, you want to take the two rods and they just slide in like this. Now, you can slide them in on varying, varying degrees, varying heights. You don't necessarily have to have them completely leveled with one another. You can have them kind of off-centered or one a little higher than the other, if you so wish. And you also come with, it also comes with these. Uh, two different colors, one orange, one yellow, one white. And these are little speech bubbles, things that you can have Deadpool uttering while he's standing on your display shelf. And those, just spin the, spin it back around there. These sit, there's a little, little hole right there. They just sit right on top of those rods. I keep saying rods, I keep wanting to think of Flanders' son. Dude, Flanders. Anyways, there is the bubbles right there. And we'll just take Deadpool quickly and stand him in front of it. And you can kind of see exactly what I'm talking about. And, of course, it being a voice bubble, you probably will want to bring these up a little higher, maybe a little lower, depending on, you know, the way that you want to have Deadpool displayed. Geez, it looks a little blank there, Spot. Something seems like it needs to be on those bubbles. Well, okay, let's move Deadpool just to the side for a second and hopefully get him to properly stand. There we go. What you can also do, too, with these bubbles is they include these. A series of different stickers. 
Indicating on the side, however, use minimum pressure, pressure, minimal pressure, when applying the stickers so that they can be removed. And the assortment consists of not only a bunch of emojis, would you still call them emojis if they're Deadpool related? I don't know if I can think of something clever to call them other than emojis, but you have my chicken, bang, 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 Deadpool attack, pawn, pouches, fourth wall, ha, no, of course, something obscene, common sense tingling, BRB, LOL, chimichangas, talking to myself again, oh, I get it, and wait a minute. And any number of these, again, you can remove. You know what they actually should have done? They should have made this more like a vinyl decal, something that, you know, the, the kind of decals that you can put on windows. It's more like a rubbery material and you can just remove those. I feel like they should have almost gone that route as opposed to it being an actual sticker. And as you can see, applying just minimum pressure, you can stick them in place. And if you haven't put too much pressure on it, you can still remove them. Still not sure about them being 100% adhesive. I feel, again, you could have gone the route of a vinyl sticker, and I think they could have served just as much purpose, and at least you could remove them without running the risk that they are permanently stuck. That being said, though, still don't apply a lot of pressure, so you want to still be able to take those off. So ultimately, the examples that Spot decided to go with was the obscene comment, as well as my chicken. Mm, delicious roast chicken, and Deadpool agrees being the inclusion of the exclamation mark. It's a nice way to include it, and I like also that the poles are removable. It's not something that is permanently affixed. You can take them off if you so wish, if you want to have Deadpool just displayed as is without the extra things. But it's nice, of course, that they would always add extra stuff that you can have for displaying them. Now let's go ahead and have a look at the figure itself, and I gotta say, it's one of Sideshow's best. And I'm not necessarily saying that because I'm just a big fan of Deadpool as a whole, but really when you start looking at all the things that they've added to this figure versus some of the other six scale figures that they released, there's a lot going on with Deadpool here. I mean, even if you just look at the pockets, all of these pockets that come included with the figure, and this could be maybe as a small gripe, all the pockets on Deadpool here are removable. Every last one of them. And, uh, well, we put one backwards, or actually this one was missing its little snap here. But all of these are removable. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. If you count the holsters, uh, 19, 20, 21. There's at least 21 pouches on Deadpool. I don't know if I'm liking the fact that they are all removable, but I guess it lends itself to the fact that you can customize this guy to your heart's content. If you want to have maybe more of the pouches down the side harnesses rather than near the top, you can certainly do that as well. But, you know, they, they do become a little problematic when you start moving things. I've had a couple of these pouches come off while moving and uh, just kind of rearranging stuff. A small, very, very small gripe versus really the level of awesomeness that this figure has. Getting a look at his face. Now, he has actually two different heads. One I look at as the more traditional Deadpool head. This is when I would have been reading him in the early limited run Deadpool comic series and also in New Mutants and X-Force where he appeared. It's more, I guess, the traditional Deadpool. However, if you want something a little more boisterous, if that's the word I want to be describing Deadpool with, he also comes with this head as well. A much more exclaimed look on his face. Not really so much in the nose or the mouth. But certainly more, ex uh, more passionate expression in his eyes, which I think I almost prefer just a little bit more. And also, too, if you spin the figure to the side, you'll see that he has a full cowl mask, whereas this one... He's got that little extra lip on the back of his mask, a very notable feature now seen on most Deadpool designs. Again, I think I kind of like this face just a little bit more. Nothing against the face that currently is residing on the shoulders of Deadpool, but I think, I think, I think, I think I like this face just a little bit more. And look at the level of detail that they've added to the face. I really like the additional dark shading that they put around the creases of the mask just to give it a, a good sense of depth and texture. Even areas such as the ears you can make out underneath what would have been this mask. Changing out Deadpool's head is actually one of the easiest I've seen from the six scale figures. 
Um, you'll notice probably on the underside that the cavity of the head is a lot bigger than what would fit a conventional six scale ball joint. And that's because if you remove the head, the head actually doesn't sit on a regular ball joint, a round circular ball joint. Instead, it sits on something like a can or cylinder style of ball joint. The head sits extremely easy, so changing out heads, no problems whatsoever. And while you wouldn't want to do the test of holding him up by his head, it still does give a pretty secure fit, all things considered. Again, this is probably going to be my preferred look for Deadpool. Nothing at all wrong with the existing head that came out of packaging, but I think this one just kind of screams Deadpool a little bit more for me. The one larger eye, I think, really just says, Merc with the mouth, this guy's got something on his mind, and no doubt it's trouble. Of course, if this was going to be a Deadpool figure, you'd have to have a bevy of different accessories and weapons. And of course, Sideshow does deliver. First things first, Deadpool comes with a pair of pistols. And I don't know if intentional, but if you can put the pistols together, it kind of gives you the Deadpool logo. I think that's kind of a nice little touch. The paint also on the handle looks very crude as if he's actually just gone to the gun the gone to the gun shop picked out a pair of pistols that he was very happy with i don't know if he would carry around credit cards with him maybe he would just try to barter sheep or some weird foreign thing in exchange for the pistols but it looks like he would have got these pistols and gone ahead and painted these himself i could kind of just see deadpool sitting on a crate somewhere in the alley maybe tongue sticking out He's carefully trying to paint his logos on the handles. It's not, it's missed some areas, but it, I think it lends itself better than if it was a very clean looking paint job. This again, looks like something he would have painted himself. I think it's a really, really nice touch. Um, the clip itself on the pistols doesn't look like it is removable. Uh, however, the, pit, the top of the pistols can slightly move more forward than back. You can easily easily put him into his hand, or what you can also do, considering he's got so many other things that he comes with, he's got a couple of holsters on the sides. You can take the pistols and just move the strap out of the way and fit the pull, the pistols right down into the the right into the holster there. And this section here is magnetized, similar to I think the Sideshow Collectibles Catwoman also had a similar sort of magnet and it closes shut, keeps it nice and secure. Go ahead and also take the pistol on the other side, fit it into its holster, and then bring the strap around. Sometimes it gets stuck here and it snaps into place. Nice secure fit, doesn't rely on uh, snaps or anything like that. So this is a good in instance where I like magnets. It wasn't crazy about it with the Catwoman belt, which was probably, I think, a bad place to put a magnet, but on the holsters for Deadpool, I think it works perfect. While we are on the topic of firepower, well, Deadpool also comes with this very large gun. It also comes with a scope, which if you take it, there's a little groove on the bottom of the scope here, and you want to just slide it up the, tr the front of the gun here. Can be a little hard to get on there, but just want to slide this up. There we go. And you have something that looks like this. That's really the only section of the gun that has any working, moving components. Um, everything else is just sculpted, but pretty happy with the detailing that they put on it. This just worn out metal as if he's had this for a long period of time. To be on a fly on the wall, as they say, I would rather much be the gun that Deadpool is carrying. Can you imagine the types of stories that it could utter? I wonder if it would speak in Spanish. But a really cool little uh, gun here. And also he comes with hands capable of holding the, any one of the guns. I'll show you that in a second. Now let's go ahead and talk about knives, or as Deadpool might refer to them as, stabby stabby things. Uh, he comes with a pair of katanas, both of which are in holsters, both of which can be removed. And the, dead, the Deadpool um, katanas here feel like they could be a plastic. I thought initially that they might be a metal, but I'm thinking more and more now that they feel like they're plastic. They do feel almost like a metal. They've got almost a, a metal weight to it. And they've been painted quite nicely too in a metallic silver. The handles are also cast, or also painted on the end there in silver, 
but the, the handle itself is black with some little red accents there uh, to add a little bit of extra detail to. So you get two of those. And if we slide these correctly into the holsters, or sheaths as they say, you can go ahead and flip the figure around to the back. And again, you can have these in any numerous places because there are clips on the backs of the sheaths. But I guess it makes more common sense, especially if he's gonna be able to retract these, that these can slide to the back harness. You have to kind of just lift. You wanna make sure that these are brought out just enough that they can fit over top of the, the back strap here. Again, do the same thing with the other one and those slide just into place. Again, it's your matter of preference. You could easily have them somewhere else, but I think it just makes a little more sense to have them completely on his back like that. Deadpool also comes with the smaller brother or Stabby Jr., which is again, almost again, appearing to be metal. I don't believe it is metal. It feels like it could be plastic, but it comes with a much, he comes with a much smaller knife. And because it's got that clip, Again, it's just a matter of preference where you want to have it displayed. You could display it on the leg. Maybe if you want to have it displayed next to the next to the pistols, you could do that. Um, you could display it on the side of his belt. Again, with all these pockets removable, it's just a matter of where you want to have it displayed. You would want to hopefully display it somewhere where Deadpool can easily pull it out. Lastly, for weapons, Deadpool comes with a pair of grenades, or as he might probably call them, Boom Boom Candies. Mm, delicious, sweet, cherry-flavored Boom Boom Candies. Uh, they are a pair of grenades with some nice paint on the front with an, a very similar expression on the grenades to that of his face. They do have pins, although I would probably not recommend trying to pull this. We don't know what absolute damage <laughs> these grenades could do. More importantly, you might find it hard to put the pins back in. And because they have the equivalent of a clip, again, depending on where you want to put it, you can put it on the front of his belt, somewhere where he can easily get to, somewhere where if he's grabbing his wallet, he may not accidentally pull the pins himself. So we've had a look at the display stand, we've had a look at the figure, we've had a look at some firearms, and we've had a look at some exploding candy. Let's have a look at some of the other things that come included with Deadpool. The last things that he does come with is a ton of different hands. Some pretty funny little hands, like I'm A-OK. -okay. That probably might be one I might display him with. He also comes with a grabbing hand, which is perfect for holding, said, for example, the, the gun. You can kind of just have him holding the gun like that. Uh, he also comes with a thumbs up. I'm A-OK -okay as well. You know what? You could have him one like this. One, although I guess that would be the same hand. Thumbs up, I'm A-OK. -okay. A couple of different holding hands for holding pistols and a couple of closed fists. I don't ever tend to display a six scale figure with closed fists. Seems like a missed opportunity, especially for Deadpool. You're gonna wanna have him pack in some heat or holding some, some blades. I don't know if I'd ever display him with closed fists to be honest, but again, I welcome any sort of inclusion from Sideshow. Speaking also of hands, look who took a visit to Pegtown. And Deadpool apparently has raided the town of every single peg available. I think there's a, probably about, I'm thinking about 10 different pegs in here for switching out his hands. Somewhat excessive, but almost as laughable as some of the other accessories he comes with. If you're gonna come packaging things with Deadpool, I think the level of excessiveness makes perfect sense to have this many pegs with Deadpool. It's almost its own little side gag. How many pegs does Deadpool have? How many do you need? That's probably the uh, question he'd be asking. So he does come with extras. So if you want to change out the hands, any one of those pegs break, not to say that it's an invite to start breaking pegs, but you do have a whole ton of extras to go by. The Merc with the mouth's articulation will consist of, as we've already had a look at, he has the ball joint head. Now he does have also a secondary hinge right at the base of the neck. So you can have the head looking quite far up if you want, quite far down, and also the full rotation based on the head sitting on top of that can-like uh, joint. Arms hinge out very easily. I don't know if I even touched base on the armor on his on the tops of his shoulders, but not restricting at all the movement in his arms. You can get still a lot of movement going all the way around. And also he has a swivel point in the bicep. He has a double hinged elbow. He has a rotation and hinge in the hand. 
As for his torso, this could be a little more problematic because again, as you start moving stuff on Deadpool, you might find a couple of pockets falling off, but don't worry, you can just clip those back into place. Finally, for the legs, the legs hinge forward and back and out, a swivel point cut at the top of the thigh, double hinged knee, a little on the creaky side there, Deadpool, a creaky double hinged knee and a foot that just popped off, but he also has a ball joint hinged foot. The Sideshow Collectibles Deadpool 6 scale figure turned out to be a really solid figure. If this is any indication as to some of the future entries that we're going to be getting from Sideshow, I think we're also going to be getting a Punisher, and more importantly, we're going to be getting a brown costume Wolverine. I think we are set to go. Um, also, too, I'm not even sure if Hot Toys will be eventually giving us a movie release of a Deadpool for the upcoming Ryan Reynolds flick, but to be honest... Even if Hot Toys doesn't end up delivering, this figure perfectly can fit into not only the realm of a comic-themed Deadpool, but also the movie. I don't think the movie is going to differ that much in costume-wise that I think this guy could also stand in for a movie-released Deadpool. He's got tons of different pockets. Can be a little problematic with the pockets falling off, but for the most part, the pros definitely outweigh the cons. And uh, this guy may or may not necessarily be displayed with the the display stand just because spots running out of space but this that guy is definitely going to be standing at the front of my glass display cabinet if you guys are interested in picking this guy up for yourself you can head over to the folks over at alter ego comics you can pick up this guy as well as some other hot six scale figures that they have over there today we're having a look at the sideshow collectibles deadpool six scale figure I don't know about the rest of you. Spot's a little hungry, so I'm going to go grab myself some chimichangas. Certainly stay tuned, guys. Spot's going to have more collectible spots heading your way. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Bang, bang. Bang.